Welcome to tutorial 4. This is in Xcode with Swift. So what we're going to create this time is a little guessing game that uses um, a, the random number generator. So this is a new mathematical concept that we didn't do in the last tutorial. So here's what the finished product is going to look like. The user enters a number, they take a guess, and if the random number is equal to their guess, then they win. If it's not, then they lost. And they can continue to guess over and over again. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new Xcode project. So new project. We'll call this project, we'll do a single view application. We'll call it a uh, guess game. And we will create this on the desktop. And as we have been doing, we are just going to simplify things by clicking on the file inspector, unchecked use auto layout, disable class sizes. And for this, we're going to need a text field for the user to enter a number. We're going to need a label that's going to tell them if they won, and another label to tell them what the correct answer was. And lastly, we're going to need a button so that they can take their guess. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit wider so that we can enter more text. And I am just going to click on View and change the background color in the Attributes Inspector to blue so that we can see this. And for the button, let's say, uh, uh, let's say, Guess and change that to red because the background is blue. Okay, so now we are ready to get coding and make our connections. So we're going to go to the assistant editor and I'm going to click the slider bar to make some more room and let's set up our connections. So. All of these, the text field and the two labels, are going to be outlets. Control, click, drag. I'm going to call this my text field one. Connect. Control, click, drag. This will be my label one. This will be my label 2. And lastly, our button is a method that is an action. So we are going to control click drag into here before the last curly brace and we're going to call this, well, it needs to be an action, super important, my button 1. And that's what we'll have everything set up to. An important thing that enables you to see what all these connections are is in this menu over here, if you click on your uh, object, whichever one you want, all your different outlets, you can click on this. This is the Show Connections. And what it does is it tells you that my text field one is connected to the view controller, which is what we want it to be. Um, we can look at the button. What is the connection of the button? So uh, this is very useful because if you end up with more than one connection uh, for the same element and then you go to run your code, it will crash. Okay, so let's go ahead and start to create our button method. So what we're going to do is say that the we have to take whatever the user entered here 
and hold on to that piece of information. So we're going to make a new variable. So we're going to say let first value. So this is going to be the person's guess. And we're going to say equal a double. So it's going to be a type of number. And we're going to say whatever went into that, which is, we already named it, it's my text field one. Now it's my text field one dot text. And we need to look inside that variable and see what they wrote. So we unwrap it with an exclamation point. Okay, next, let. Now we need to generate a random number. Let's call it num. And we are going to say that that is also a double. And here's how you create a random number. You say arc for whoops, arc4, random parentheses, then we're going to use the remainder function, 10. And what this is going to do is produce a number between 0 and 9. Am I missing a bracket? There is something wrong here. There we go. Okay. So, now we need to check to see if the person's guess is equal to random number. So let's say if first value, no, I'm sorry, let's, let's do this. Let's let the user know what their guess was. So we can do this for my label too. So let's say my label two dot text is equal to, and we'll say the answer was or is the answer is, and what is the answer? The answer is whatever the random number is, which we're going to call ran. Well, we already called it random. So this is going to end up saying the answer is whatever the random number that generated was comma you guessed what did you guess you guessed whatever your first value was so front slash first value okay so now we've given the user what the correct answer was and we've also told them what their guess was, which they should know anyway. And now let's make the if statement to find out if they won. Okay, so we're going to say if first value, their, that's their guess, is equal to, so we need a double equal sign so that it evaluates. This is a comparison between first value. That's different than a single equal sign, which just says this is going to be this. This is saying first value is first value equal to ran num. Well, if it is, then do what's ever inside these two curly braces. Well, what do we want to have happen? Well, if that is uh, true, then the person won. So let's take my label one and reward them my label one dot text and we're gonna say you won okay but if it's not equal then we have to say else so if it's not equal else what should we say well let's make my label one dot text equal to Sorry, try again. Drowning face. Okay, so um, I think we're good to go. Uh, one other thing that I'd like to do is I don't, this is kind of ugly because if we run it, those labels are going to show up. So in SuperView did load, let's say my label 
one dot hidden equals true. Let's make it a true statement that that's hidden. And my label two dot hidden is also equal to true. And I'm going to copy these two statements so that when we run the button, we're going to make those, these are called Boolean statements, it's either true or false. We're going to say once the button's pressed, they're no longer going to be hidden. Okay, so let's check it out. This was the other one I built. Okay, so now we can take a guess. And we didn't guess the... Uh, oh, we need to make that a little bit longer. I'll show you how to fix that in just a second. Um, okay, but here's a secondary problem. What if the user didn't enter an answer and it's saying that it guessed nil? So what we want to say is we're going to surround this entire thing by an if-else statement. So we're going to take all of this and surround that by this. If first value exclamation point equals if the first value does not equal nil in other words that means the user entered something then run the code all the way down here but if it is nil else let's tell them to do something such as my label uh, one dot text equals please enter a number okay and I think we have the right bracket one, two, three. We have a second else statement. Okay. I was missing one more bracket. Okay, so now if we run it um, and we end up not entering a number, then the user is going to end up being told that they need to enter a number. Please enter a number. Now, that problem that we had before, um, I'm just going to show you in here if we need to have more room in our label. Get rid of this. Um, we need more room in this label. Then in the attributes inspector, we can take this and drag this down and extend this to be an extra line. Okay, that's it. I'm not sure what tutorial five is going to be yet, but I have a couple of ideas, possibly doing segues. So thanks for watching.